Just three days after last Thanksgiving, Syracuse police were called to 604 East Division Street after someone found a body. According to the police report, it was an 11-year-old child who gave investigators information about the body after he could not find a pulse. Fentanyl, labeled Fortnite, was found in the home that was riddled with trash, clothing, and drug paraphernalia. A month later, on Christmas Day, Syracuse police were called back to the home, this time for a possible burglary. A police report notes that the interior was in disarray, as several items appeared to have been broken or damaged. Again, this was months before he passed away. Correct. Jarrett Woodfork is an assistant district attorney for Onondaga County. I showed him some of the dozens of photos I got a hold of through a public records request. In this case, um, there was a consensus um, that when Ashen passed that that was clear that the home was uh, not suitable mm -hmm. for a child to be living in. Both of those incidents happened just three months before 11-year-old Ashton DeGunzak was found unconscious in his home. He died in the hospital a few hours later, fentanyl in his system. If finding a body and evidence of drug use isn't enough, what else is needed to remove a child? You know, I, it, it, it again would be hard for me to say, um, and I wouldn't want to speak um, in regards to you know, their jurisdiction and their standards. One would imagine that those would be definitely um, triggers to definitely take a further look into the conditions of the home. I think everyone is in agreement that that deeper look should have been taken though. Should Child Protective Services have intervened earlier? It's a question that Woodfork did not answer. We do know that two CPS workers were forced to resign as a result of Ashton's death, a death that some say could have been prevented. It is something that is avoidable. It's something that, that should never happen. So where does the case stand now? Well, it's an ongoing investigation. The DA's office tells me it's working closely with Syracuse police. Rachel Polanski, News Channel 9.